Hello there! Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you did because today I'm going to be painting a portrait of my friend Sergeant Al. And although it's a fairly fun subject, I've used lots of techniques that the masters used to use to create their portraits. But before I get started, if you love art, then come over to our webpage at www montmart.net because we have lots more lessons there. It's also the only place that you can get the downloadable PDF. We also have our Facebook and our creative connection there as well and that's our art club and if you subscribe to that you get hints, tips and other goodies. So let's get into it. working on a canvas panel, to minimise any possible bowing, I give the back side of the panel a coating with gesso. Once that's dry, I apply more gesso to the front of the panel. I'm using a fair amount and I'm applying it with a float. I want my support to be smooth. This is because I will be using very thin glazes and the pigment will well in the furrows of the canvas otherwise. I then take the A3 printout of the image in the PDF lesson plan and shade the back side. Turn it back round, face down and with a ballpoint pen retrace the line work and voila. Well now that I have the Ancestor Owl painting in the background I'm going to position my main owl and I'm going to do it a little bit lower and to the left. Again follow the same steps, work from the top down and faithfully reproduce everything you see. So now that our image is on the canvas I'm going to go back in with the black biro and I'm going to pick out those fine details. Things like the buttons, piping and the metals. I just don't want to lose those details in the painting process. Everything else I want to be fairly soft. Next you need to thoroughly read the PDF to familiarise yourself with the materials that will be used. So now we're familiar with all of our products, we can start the painting. Now print out the second image in the PDF as this has the finished tonal guide to refer to. The PDF also outlines all the colours that are used, as well as the ratios of paint to medium. But of course a little trial and error is needed. The main thing is to not thin the paint too much, but enough that it flows nicely. Into the mid-tone add the lights and then the darks followed by some white. This is the only time white will be used in the underpainting stage, but it is needed to suggest the highlights on that frame. Highlight areas will be put in with the main owl, but it will be done by removing the colour. But we'll get to that. Alrighty then, now I can start on Sergeant Owl. Now I don't want to talk too much, but basically I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down so the back of my hand doesn't get mucky. I'm using an old paintbrush as a marl stick and the only thing to bear in mind with this is to keep the colours uh, fairly thin and bear in mind the light source direction which in this case is coming from this way. So let's start painting. A really pleasing way to render subtle tones is to lay in a mid-tone and then remove it with a paper towel. This gives a soft tone that is hard to achieve with another technique. Again refer to the tonal guide for reference in this step.
this step is quite important as it carries the tonal shaping and we will be glazing over the top of it. Although this step might look challenging, it's actually quite easy to get smooth transitions in oil. And it stays open so you can take your time. Let's move on to that old Chesterfield chair now. The thing to bear in mind here is the back is a series of compound curves, so the highlights will fall in the middle of each one. I've marked the position of each highlight on the outline image to make it easier. underpainting process is the background and I'd like this to look really dark and rich so I'm going to use ivory black and yellow ochre and I'm going to apply it with a large soft brush so let's get this background in start with pure black in the corners and blend the ochre into that try to make the color lighter behind the owl this will reinforce the fact that he is the focal point as a matter of interest this was the colour combination that Titan used for the background in a lot of his portraits. And I love the rich antique tertiary tones created with these colours. The old masters used a lot of tertiary colours as they didn't have nearly the range the modern painter has at their disposal. In fact, yellow as we know it wasn't around for over 250 years after Titan, but they did pretty well with what they had. Once the paint is applied to your satisfaction, lightly blend it with a clean, soft, wide brush and let the painting dry. Well, that's been left over the weekend and because I kept that base coat very thin, it's nice and dry now, ready for the top coat and the glazing. Now, it's very important you don't start this next step until it's dry to the touch or cracking can result in the future. Refer to the PDF for the colours that I'm using and you can find that in Montmartre TV at our website. So let's get this top coat on. I suppose this is like a miniature painting all on its own. Refer to that PDF again and keep those colours thin so the top colours have that rich tone.
here over my tertiary underpainting. And although white isn't a good tone to glaze, the resulting dirty colour works in this case, as there is rarely pure white in nature. A thing to remember about glazing is if you look at your oil paint, you will see a little diagram like this. If it's an open circle or a half circle like this, it will glaze better than this. This closed circle signifies that the pigment is opaque. Opaque pigments don't glaze as well. On to Sergeant Owl's splendid tunic now. The mix to create this colour is in the PDF. Use the finest tacklon or sable round for this and concentrate on getting a uniform coverage. Always work in the direction of form. The tonal modelling is already in there, so we just need to darken in the right areas. Chesterfield chair, we need to create a real contrast of light and dark. In art terms, this is referred to as chiascuro. Isn't it just a fantastic word? And if you don't already, make sure you use that word as much as possible to make yourself sound more worldly. Really exaggerate the darks with black, but remember all the time to keep the coats thin. <laughs> you've enjoyed the journey this far. The last step is to glaze in the background. Use plenty of medium for this and this will really give it that luminous look that traditional paintings had. As I said, thin this with a lot of medium. You really want that underpainting visible. Use the edge of the brush as brush strokes are less visible. Once the paint is dispersed, use that large wide tacklon to blend it. Now the brush should glide over the surface. If the brush is grabbing, you're holding it too rigidly. Just relax. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the other lessons, subscribe to our Creative Connection and our Facebook. And remember to always keep on painting.